Hey, I'm Myers, and uh, got another new release here on Sue Records. Um, so, for those of you keeping track, this is the fifth new release in less than a month. Um, so, a few things have gone on. Uh, one, uh, I, I kind of threw myself into the label uh, since my daughter Ashley died. And uh, so Ashley died on February 11th. And, um, you know, so, some of the stuff, you know, that have been released lately, uh, been in the works since before then. But, uh, you know, so I didn't lose my mind. I, I, I got busy with the label and doing some other stuff. I started this YouTube channel just you know to keep myself busy and uh you know uh try to keep myself occupied where I, I would have a whole lot of time to dwelling on stuff that being said uh somehow at the pressing plant orders got out of sequence so we went from doing uh the uh Oh, so here's the thing. Like, uh, we had done 12 releases on the Sue label. And then we did our first release on Sue After Dark, the side label, which uh, was the Miss Smiths. Um, I really like the Miss Smiths. Uh, the thing is, they don't really belong on a punk and roll label. So I decided to do Sue After Dark, a side label, which has all the same sort of feel as Sue, but it's not punk and roll exclusive. It, like, uh, the side label is for uh, goth and emo and uh, industrial shit that I, I like that uh, doesn't really belong on the main label. And, uh, and Miss Smiths were uh, a, a great great addition or you know, they were a great first release on the side label. So, uh, been waiting for the catalog number SUX013, which is, uh, you know, the 13th release on the main label and uh, from Model Deluxe. But in the meantime, because the record, uh, the pressing plant got screwed up somehow, I've gotten number 14 which was uh the gorilla teens or number 14 no number 14 was uh rebel flesh rebel flesh from texas great fucking band great fucking record absolutely love them super stoked about that record um the gorilla teens uh, it was number 15 that came out a couple weeks ago uh, which is Scott Drake's band and uh, Jeff Fieldhouse, like original Humpers members, with uh, Sal Cole, who Sal uh, was in the Love Source with Jeff and Scott, and uh, you know, so uh, you know, it, it, kind of a evolution of that sort of sound. Great fucking record, um, you know, super stoked about that one. Then we did uh, Loose Rails last week it was only it wasn't even a week ago we had loose rails uh red turns to green which originally came out in uh 92 91 92 i can't remember when that came out um but uh 93 sometime you know basically it's a 30 year old record that uh only ever came out on CD and cassette never has been on vinyl before so it's kind of a re-release because you know here's a 30 year old record but it is kind of something new because it's never been on vinyl before so uh loose rails from Minneapolis they have that great Minneapolis twin tone sort of sound even though they were never a twin tone band but they fucking rock I'm super stoked about that and then Friday uh released Richard Duguay's uh 45 you guys all know Richard Duguay from uh, from the Canadian punk band Personality Crisis, and uh, you know, so he's got a great forty-five uh, A side as a song called "Fuck You Fame Horror," um, which uh, 
is a little bit. Uh, I guess it's exactly what you would think it would be uh, with a song called oh, "Fuck You, Fimor. But uh, and then the B side is uh, a cover of the Arthur Lee love song uh, "Signed DC," which he has Pat Todd from the Lazy Cowgirls and Pat Todd and the Rank Outsiders blowing harmonica on. Um, so it's great 45. So that's number 17, SUX 17, you know. Well, so today just came home to uh, Mono Deluxe. So this is SUX 013. So Mono Deluxe, uh, Time Moons, All Heels. Uh, great cover, uh, great title to the album. Um, here's a picture of the band. This is silk screen, so... Like, you could feel the tactile feel of uh, the, you know, printing on, you know, it kind of has a 3D feel, kind of like the printing on your T-shirt. You know, you could feel on a T-shirt, the print. So here's your back, you know, title up top, your song, some credits there, you know. Um, you know, so silk screen white and red on black and uh so paper sleeve nothing spectacular about that uh like all sue releases on lp this is uh 180 gram white vinyl so uh there's your center label now all my releases are hand numbered on the a side label so this, you know, is one of 300 right there. So, um, you know, so, I mean, if you get, happen to get 136 of 300, you know that nobody else has 136 of 300. And that was kind of like a Sioux promise deal that, like, um, they're hand-numbered on the, on the record itself, on top of which uh, will never repress. You know, if we end up selling through all the release, uh, all the uh, pressings of a release, and you know, down the road, and uh, like a, a band wants to reissue, you know, re release something, I, I, I'm going to tell them to go shopping for another label, you know, because uh, that's, you know, that's not something I'm into. You know, it's kind of hard when I straight up on the center label have blank of 300 and now all of a sudden I'm repressing it and it's not one of 300 it's one of 600 one of you know a thousand whatever you know somebody represses or whatever I'm not going to do that you know so um there's only ever going to be 300 of these mono deluxes on Sue. that's not to say that down the road you know the band sells through and you know um people are wanting this or whatever and you know uh ho and the guys uh, decide to you know pursue another label and you know somebody else picks it up you know uh you know that that's very likely you know but uh sue will not repress it so um you know and, and that's happened to a lot of you know, my favorites you know I, I mean like the zero boys uh album uh you know, it was on Toxic Shock, and then uh, Dan Panic from Screech and Weasel. He had Panic Button Records uh, re-released it, and then it was out on. You know, um, the Zero Boys been on about four or five different labels with one record. You know, so um, that stuff happens. You know, but uh, Sue isn't really into repressing anything. So that being said, um, I want to talk about this. You know, I showed you what it looks like, showed you the art, showed you the record. Uh, you know, um, these guys, um, SoCal band, they fucking rock. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about them. They, they uh, kind of more on the harder edge of punk and roll. You know, like, okay, so my label, Sue, we do punk and roll records, and, you know, way I explain that to laymen who don't know what punk and roll is is imagine punk rock guys grew up listening to Kiss ACDC, Thin Lizzy Cheap Trick, bands like that T-Rex uh, 
maybe get into some more of the glam bands like Sw- the Sweet or something like that. But uh, you know, th- these same guys, may- maybe a punk and roll guy grew up listening uh, Kiss and ACDC, also listened to Sabbath, Deep Purple, and some of the heavier bands. And you know, so there is a contingent of heavier punk and roll and that's where mono deluxe is these guys are on that heavier edge of uh you know punk and roll which um i dig it you know i mean i i dig the genre of punk and roll period you know so if you're more of a glam band you know um or if you're more of you know uh like a pop sort of cheap trick sound and thing, you know, I mean, we just put out a couple of pop sound and uh, records and, and rebel flesh and loose rails, you know, um, you know, but uh, you know, like on the loose rails record, there's a cover of the angels. Uh, well, I ever see your face again. And uh, you know, which is a great fucking song, um, you know, definitely pop influence, but uh you know, this is something different. This is harder. This is, you know, you know, you could hear that. Uh, this, this is not a fucking metal record. You know, this isn't, you know, um, metal by any means. But th- this is something a little bit harder. You know, something a little bit. Uh, you know, and, and th- there's always like through the '90s and whatever. There's always there's two early 2000s been that contingency of something a little bit harder a little bit more um you know and uh you know it really kind of broke loose with you know like bands like b movie rats and uh and zeke and uh some of those heavier bands in the early 2000s you know this kind of is a continuation of like i say it's not metal but you know these guys are these guys are kind of pushing that heavier you know like like i say imagine if punk and rolls punk rock guys grew up listening kissing acdc these are guys who grew up listening to sabbath deep purple and uh nazareth some of them heavier bands you know uh a little bit heavier than the cheap tricks and the t-rexes and the uh sweets uh, out there you know so um i dig it um what I'm going to play you is uh, instrumental. It's the first song off the record. It's called Overture Deluxe, which is the first song off A side. Um, it is an instrumental. Now, most of the songs do have uh, lyrics to them. You know, um, they're great. You know, but uh, I think you'll get a real flavor for the band listening to this first song, Overture Deluxe. I hope you dig it. I'm going to put a link in the description where you can grab a copy of your own uh, from the Sioux website. The band, uh, if you're out in Southern California, you catch these guys. I know these guys are playing a lot because Ho keeps attending me. Uh, show bills of, uh, you know, uh, they're playing Alex's. They're playing Redwood. They're playing all these fucking uh, SoCal joints and whatever all the time you know so i know this is a hard fucking working band these guys play a lot because i'm seeing the show bills of it um you know so uh they're going to have copies uh i'm going to send uh, send oh the band's copies tomorrow so hopefully by the end of the week he's got them and uh you know like you say uh they'll have copies uh, the band's going to get 75 copies the rest of the copies will be sold on the Sue Guitars website um, you know Sue's got a handful of shops here and there you know we do do some trade with uh, European uh, stuff uh, we trade with Ghost Highway Records out of Madrid Spain uh, we also trade with Heavy Medication out of Warsaw Poland um, you know we've done some trade stuff with uh, with uh drag shirt bright out of uh estonia so those are my partners over in europe they're awesome you know they have great fucking labels um super glad to work with those guys you know so uh 
you know, uh, we do do trade stuff like that, uh, and uh, you know, try to get the stuff out there, you know, um, you know, but uh, by and large, you know, like especially here in the U.S., just go to my website and uh, you can pick up a copy, um, get a copy from the band. Uh, you know, if you're up in the Twin Cities right now, um, they obviously don't have this because we just got the vinyl to do it today. But uh, up in the Twin Cities, uh, Roadrunner Records on Nicollet has uh, all the Sioux catalog except for this. And uh, also... Uh, Barely Brothers and St. Paul, they got all the suit catalog except for this. So, uh, Barely Brothers and Roadrunner, you know, I really appreciate those guys uh, working with me. And, uh, you know, so, but uh, Modern Deluxe, if you like, you, here's the thing, like, I, I'm trying to put out, uh, I love punk and roll, you know, I, I to me, uh, this is just me. I'm not talking for anybody else, but for me, I love Crypt and Sympathy Records in the '90s. I mean, to me, Sympathy Records and Crypt and Junk, RAFR, Gearhead, uh, so many Man's Ruin. Um, you know, there was so many fucking great labels in the 90s putting out you know great punk and roll stuff I, I really fucking dug it then you know I mean love the new Bomb Turks I love the Devil Dogs I, I, I love Lazy Cowgirls I love all these fucking bands from the 90s I love the Humpers you know I mean the Humpers are good friends of mine um, you know so I, I, I love those labels you know but the thing is with sympathy for the record industry is even though the label had a very specific sound, like none of the bands sounded like each other, you know, like sympathy itself had a sound to it, you know, like you could think of sympathy as being like any of the great labels of, you know, like, uh, Stax or, uh, Volt or Motown or any, you know, uh, of the great old labels, you know, it, it had a specific sound to it. But inside of Sympathy, you know, the Humpers didn't fucking sound like Jeff Dahl. And Jeff Dahl didn't sound like the Lazy Cowgirls. And, you know, there was a, a, a breadth, uh, an expansiveness of great fucking records of uh, amazing acts that, you know, that's what I'm trying to achieve here is, you know, there's a lot of fucking great bands. And, you know, the Y'all don't sound like Richard Buckus and... Uh, he definitely doesn't sound like Bono Deluxe. And, uh, you know, so, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate everybody's interest in the label. I, I appreciate, you know, um, hey, honestly, guys, I appreciate all the outpouring of support since Ashley died. It, it's been, it's been a, 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 it's been a fucked up thing since, uh, since Ashley died. So, uh, you know, um, I really, I really appreciate um, the interest in the label and, you know, how great everybody's been to work with. Um, you know, super stoked about, you know, all the bands I'm putting out. You know, we put out a lot of shit lately. This should have come out before the other four fucking recent releases. I apologize to Ho and those guys. You know, I just got this today. Um, you know... But, hey, I dig this record a lot. I'm super stoked about it. Um, so, uh, personally, in my opinion, I think you all should own every fucking Sue record, you know, um, because each of them has something to say. And, you know, I, I put them out with an idea, kind of like making a mixtape of, you know, that making a mixtape, you start out with a rock and song and then you uh, kind of crank it up a little bit more and then maybe you try something a little bit new that you haven't really done before you know so I mean that, that's been the idea with Sue with the label is you know I put out you know the first the y'all uh, I, I 
you know, I, I think they're all bad. And, and, you know, so I put them out there. Then Richard Buckus and the luckiest girls, you know, like um, that, that kind of stepped up a, a notch because, you know, he's famous from being in Degeneration. And, uh, you know, Degeneration was one of the biggest bands of the 1990s. Um, I don't know anybody who didn't ha- listen to No Lunch or have No Lunch in their fucking car driving around in the 90s. But, uh, you know, and then I did a, a record with the bad actors who are relatively unknown. You know, like um, outside of Sioux City and Omaha, m- most people have never heard of the bad actors. They're friends of mine. You know, I grew up with that. And, uh, Sean was around and, you know, whatever. And so there are Sioux City guys who, you know, um, Thad's, uh, Thad Sand has been like an older brother to me over the years. Him, His life and my life are pretty similar. We both, you know, um, our families are pretty similar as far as, you know, him and I both kind of married it pre into pre-made families, you know, married women who had kids already and just, uh, you know, kind of took on raising kids and, uh, you know, took on, you know, uh, all, you know, like just, I, I don't know. Um, so that and I got a lot of kinship and that sort of stuff. And, you know, and, and we've never talked about it at, at all. Um, you know, that and I talked about, you know, bands we're into you know, or shows we've seen or whatever. Um, speaking of that, shows, I, I I struggle with shows because I've got really bad social anxiety, but last night with, uh, or the, not last night, um, this weekend with the shooting at Nudie Land in Minneapolis, um, this is a venue I've never been to. These are bands I've never fucking heard of. But it, it was a, a shooting at a punk club. And, uh, dude, that ain't fucking cool. That ain't fucking cool. Like, um, the way I feel about guns is, is you know, I mean, um, I, I, I've got a, a dead daughter because of a gun. I've got a dead brother-in-law who committed suicide with a gun. Um, I'm not a fan of guns. And I, uh, the way I feel about guns is... Like the the scene with the dad in the movie Friday of like son, you don't need a gun. You know if you can't do it with your fists, then you know. I, I mean, don't be afraid of taking that fucking ass whooping. You know. I mean, I, I, I grew up in the punk scene in, in, in a redneck town, and I run my mouth. I run my mouth a lot. I got my ass whooped a lot. A lot of times I had it coming. But, you know, getting your ass whooped is, is totally different than, than being shot to death. And uh, it, it's heartbreaking, you know. Um, it, 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 here's what I, I really don't understand about this, and this is all I'm going to say about it, is um, in this country, we refuse to give mental health access to people who have pre-existing mental health conditions we refuse to pay for it we don't have universal health care we don't you know uh so unless you got good insurance or whatever you're sol on taking care of yourself especially with mental health stuff so people with pre-existing mental health issues um we won't treat them but we'll fucking give them access to a gun you know, like, like, what kind of fucking sense is that? Then we'll throw up our arms in the air and, like, there's just nothing that can be done. You know, I don't feel freer because of guns. You know, I don't. You know, I, I, I choose not to go to events because all these fucking mass shootings. You man, you can't go to the movies. You can't go to... Uh, churches or synagogues you can't go to the grocery store you can't go to a walmart you can't go to you send your kids to school or college without mass fucking shootings uh, you can't have country music festivals in las vegas or uh, punk shows in a fucking high, a residential neighborhood in minneapolis without mass shootings what the fuck are we doing wrong here now blame the fucking guns I've heard idiots tell me, well, sticks kill more people in this country than guns do. It's like, no, man. 
I don't have a dead daughter and a dead brother, son, uh, brother-in-law because of sticks, you know. My brother-in-law didn't commit suicide with a stick. My daughter didn't die from a stick accident. So, I'm sorry for going off on a tangent, but, you know, I mean, I left Sioux City a couple years ago, moved up to southwest Minnesota, and... I go to Minneapolis a lot. I go to Minneapolis more than I go to Sioux City. And, uh, you know, Minneapolis is, you know, like a second home to me. And I love that town. And it's tragic to me, you know, that something like a punk show, a DIY hardcore show in a house, you know, for what? You know, I, I mean... Put the fucking guns down. You want to prove that you're a fucking tough guy? Use your fists. You know, it's just like that scene in the movie Friday, man. Like, you know, if, if, if you're afraid to tell, you can ass whooping. You, you ain't no man. A gun don't make you a man. It makes you a fucking chicken shit. You know? So, I'm really frustrated about that. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. Um, You know... Got the new model deluxe. I fucking dig these guys. Um, the song I'm going to play you, Overture Deluxe, is instrumental, but you know, the whole album's worth checking out. Um, so, anyways, uh, thanks for listening to your Ramble. And Ho and the guys, uh, you know, hey, thanks for trusting me with doing your record. Um, sorry it's taken as long as it has. You know, I, I really appreciate you guys putting some faith in me. And asking me to work with you on doing this record because this record is fucking fantastic. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.